Scotland travelled to Paris looking for a first win in the Guinness Six Nations since 1999. Gregor Townsend's men without the services of Stuart Hogg, Finn Russell and Hugh Jones through injury, but with memories of last season's win over the French in Murrayfield fresh in their minds. After defeat against Wales and England in their opening two matches, French coach Jacques Brunel put his faith in youth, including 19-year-old Romain Entemac, 22-year-old Antoine Dupont and 23-year-old Thomas Ramos in his 15. With seven minutes on the clock, there was early drama when Damien Peno crossed in the corner for what looked like the first try of the afternoon, but when referee Nick Berry consulted with the TMO Rowan Kitt, Dupont was deemed to have knocked the ball on in the lead-up to the score and the try was disallowed. Yes, mate, that is a knock-on along the floor yeah. before the try is scored. However, it wasn't long before the home crowd had a score to celebrate from inside their own 22. France countered with Ramos carrying from deep before passing to Peno. Dupont took it on and when he was grounded, the French recycled quickly and Entomac was free to cross for his first international try. Already a contender for try of this season's Guinness Six Nations. Ramos added the extras and France were 7-0 ahead after 13 minutes. Further French pressure yielded a penalty to move 10-0 ahead. Then, after missing a very kickable penalty a few minutes earlier, Greg Laidlaw put Scotland's first points on the board in the 26th minute with a kick from in front of the posts. In the process, he became the second highest point scorer for Scotland in history, overtaking Gavin Hastings. 10 points to 3, 26 minutes in. Shortly after that, Juan Uger was sin-binned, paying the price for repeated French infringements. But despite being reduced in numbers, France attacked and for the second time in the match saw a try disallowed for a knock-on. Scotland relieved after a wonderful kick from Entomac was collected by Gael Ficou. He sprinted over the line. However, an earlier knock-on by Wenceslas Lore was spotted by the officials and the score didn't stand. France still 10-3 ahead, but it could so easily have been more. That's how it stayed until the half-time break. Shortly after the restart, more champagne rugby from the home side led to a second try of the match. Matthew Bastereau might be better known as a battering ram, but he showed some delicate skills in midfield before Ficou and then Picamol got involved. When the ball was fed wide to Hugé, he charged over the line for another superb French score. Le Bleu, 15 points to three ahead, and although Ramos missed the conversion, it was a brilliant start to the second period by Brunel's men, and Scotland were badly in need of inspiration. On 55 minutes, it almost came from Sean Maitland, who hit top gear as he raced into French territory. But persistent defending from Ficou averted the threat, and France maintained their 12-point lead. At the other end, the French threatened a third try when Uge danced past a couple of tacklers before driving towards the Scottish line. With support outside, the winger might have passed, but he held on to the ball and was held up himself. The chance was gone, but it was another example of the joie de vivre that France were playing with. Le Bleu almost extended their lead with seven minutes remaining when the Scots under pressure took the ball back over their own goal line. Ficou got a touch on the ball and claimed the try, but when the TMO reviewed the incident, it was deemed that the Scots had got the ball down before Fiku got a touch. A five-metre scrum ensued. Blue have taken it back, but they have granted, so it's going to be your scrum, OK? Five metres out. Scrum. Right. But the pressure close to the line paid off for the French when substitute Gregory Aldrich picked up from the scrum and forced his way over to make it 20 points to three. Seram missed the conversion but the home side had a healthy 17-point lead. There was a late consolation for the Scots when Peter Horn got in behind the French defence and fed substitute Ali Price, who dashed under the posts for a try. It was converted by Adam Hastings, son of the great Gavin, to leave it 20 points to 10. But there was still time for France to secure a bonus point fourth try deep in additional time. Having had a score ruled out by the TMO for a double movement as he crossed the line, Aldred wouldn't be denied moments later when the incessant French pressure was rewarded right at the death. Fourth try, 
a bonus point victory and a first win of the championship for France. When Serran converted with the last kick of the match, it finished 27 points to 10. Scotland's long wait for a win in Paris continues. They host Wales on match day four. France will travel to Dublin on a high. Final score in Paris, France 27, Scotland 10.